Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in uh, Nevada at a competency hearing for uh, Roger Hillegas as he is... He stands accused of kidnapping his own mother from a nursing home in which a there was a custody dispute over the whole thing. So he decided to take matters into his own hands without going through the law first. And as a result, a bench warrant was issued for his arrest by the very judge presiding over this competency hearing at the moment. Now, as I stated before, this is merely a uh, competency hearing for uh, Mr. Hillegas to determine whether or not he is competent enough to stand trial. So the only thing that should be determined in this particular hearing is whether or not he is competent, but he turns this into an entire three-ring circus after he uh, fires his attorney and ends up uh, trying to represent himself as if this were the actual trial. Now, this uh, original video is well over an hour long, uh, actually an hour and 15 minutes long, so I may have to divide this into two or more parts. So, that with that being said, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're on the record in case number CR19-1535A. Uh, Mr. Hanty and his counsel, Mr. Silverberg, were excused from this hearing, starting with the state, and then the appointed counsel, and then the defendant. If you could please state your appearances for the record. Hello, Judge Dana, stay here for the state. Thank you. Christian was on behalf of Mr. Hillegas, who's present in custody. Thank you. Mr. Hillegas. Yes, and I do not consent to this um, for-profit corporation. Uh, I do not consent to this hearing. Um, it's a violation of my constitutional rights, and you just want to know to protect those. And I'm about to put you on notice that the Department of Justice is investigating the for-profit corporation known as the Washoe County Detention Facility for violations of my ADA and my HIPAA rights. And they're also investigating NAFCARE, and they're also investigating the Washoe County Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office for Fourth Amendment violations, which is illegal search and seizure, which is also including you because the um, order that you issued for me to, as a bench warrant was an illegal search and seizure, which was done in Missouri. And so I just need to put everybody on notice that anything they say can and will be used against them. Well, first of all, like in other sovereign citizen videos, uh, the United States nor its uh, protectorates are a corporation, you doofus. I mean, if you can't even figure out what a corporation is, then uh, I don't think you're competent enough to even represent yourself, which is what you're going to do here later on. Second of all, your consent is not required for a uh, due process of law to occur. If consent were required, then it would be absolute anarchy and nothing would ever get accomplished. Then on to the next uh, point, uh, that this hearing is a violation of your rights. Uh, dude, uh, you do realize that due process, which is going on right now, is your 14th Amendment right? Don't you realize that? I mean, come on now, dude. So get with it and read an actual book instead of... Uh, well, reading that soft, hard literature that got you here to begin with. Now, to the next point of uh, your hippo rights apparently being violated by the detention center. Uh, what relevance does that serve to this particular case of you uh, allegedly kidnapping your own grandmother? I mean, your own mother, excuse me. Because this is, after all, at the very heart of your upcoming trial. So do keep it to the relevant points instead of conjecture that you come up, that you bring out of your own ass. And on to your last point about the uh, bench warrant being illegal. No, dude. Uh, you were accused of committing a crime. They had to track you down. And it's not a violation of the Fourth Amendment because it is a perfectly reasonable search and seizure of your property in this particular case. So why don't you stop your crying and uh, suck it up in buttercup and realize you done messed up, dude. Now you're going to have to pay the price. 
Very well. <coughs> This is the time and date set for a competency hearing. At the last hearing, the court indicated that it hoped to make a determination as to whether Mr. Hillegas was competent to stand trial today. Some preliminary thoughts. First, in making that determination, the court is guided, of course, by Nevada Revised Statute 178. <clears throat> Therein, the court is to determine whether Mr. Hillegas possesses the ability to comprehend the nature of the criminal charges against him, whether he understands the nature and purpose of the proceedings against him, and whether he can aid and assist, if he had counsel, his attorney, if he's self-represented self then himself, uh, with a reasonable degree of rational understanding of what is occurring. Oh, he perfectly understands uh, what's uh, the issue here, but uh, it's the fact that he's going to represent himself and uh, use a lot of soft tarred uh, arguments to try to uh, defend himself with. It's That's the biggest issue right there, considering, uh, well, others have tried and uh, not been so successful. Many, many minutes later, so let's turn to the competency hearing. Here's, here are some additional thoughts by the court. And, you know, Mr. Hillegas or, or Mr. Prasad can straighten the court out if I have this wrong. But I believe the evidence reflects that Mr. Hillegas suffered a fairly significant head injury from a fall off a roof in 2019. Well, now, that might explain the reason why he fell for all the soft tarred garbage to begin with and decided to go uh, kidnap his own uh, mother, uh, even though he doesn't have a place to stay himself. Because apparently, uh, part of the issue of the custody battle is that he does not have his own place so, uh, there you go. Head injury and his uh, transient status in this case really affects the issues. So, let's just get on with this and see what kind of stupidity comes out of this guy's mouth. The extent of it, the impact on his cognitive um, um, abilities. Or Okay, here's the deal. After having seen this video most of the way through already while editing, I figured that I might as well go in and trim the fat by uh, editing out the uh, legal jargon procedures and everything like that. I mean, from this point on, he has been declared legally competent to uh, proceed with uh, a trial, but... It's not going to end there. He, he's got to get his words in, and that's what we're all here to see, is we're here to see his stupidity. So let's get on with the show. A little longer than a few minutes later. Mr. Hillegas, you want to address the court? Go ahead, sir. I would. Uh, I object to the, um, the hearing on multiple reasons. I have not been provided any of the documents that we're talking about today, so I've not seen any of that, so I've not been properly noticed or served. Uh, well, dude, uh, if you wanted to see the documents, all you had to do was talk to your lawyer who's sitting right next to you. I mean, it's that simple because, well, he would have had access to them as part of the whole process, you dumbass. Um, there are jurisdictional challenges that have been place before you and they have not been responded to with a finding of fact or conclusion of law. So I therefore challenge, continue to challenge your jurisdiction in this case. I have not seen a finding of fact or conclusion of law which gives you jurisdiction over me personally. 
because you have uh, stipulated by your silence that I am one of the people, I am a natural living man, I am not the fiction, I'm not the vessel, I'm not the transmitting utility. Transmitting utility? What the hell are you talking about, dude? I am a natural living flesh and blood man, and that is a reason why you lack personal jurisdiction, and you do not lack subject matter jurisdiction over this case either. What a pathetic argument you've got right there, dude, because every person that comes through that court is a living, breathing, living person, you dumb pile of crap. And as far as jurisdiction goes, are you not a citizen of the United States? Well, if you are, then he definitely has jurisdiction over you. Do you reside within the state of Nevada? If you do, then this judge most certainly does have jurisdiction over you. So, it is... Now, don't get me wrong. There are rare circumstances where jurisdiction issues do come up. But uh, this is not going to be one of those situations. Because there is no victim in this case. There is no injured party. There is no probable cause. This case all started... Uh, wrong, dude. The victim in this case is your own mother and the probable cause. Well, they did spot you taking your uh, mother out of there without authorization from the uh, uh, nursing home. So, yeah, there you go, dude. And by the way, there is a FOIA request that is being looked into for the, the federal government is looking into why I was arrested in California, in LA, without a warrant, that there was a warrant issued in Nevada based on no probable cause, based on a falsified document by the officer who investigated this, um, Allison Jenkins. And they also did an illegal um, track and trace of my cell phone. And the same thing happened in Missouri. It was an illegal search and seizure. And the Nevada Supreme Court recently in Mac, in the case of Mac back in December, ruled that um, anybody that does an illegal search and seizure loses immunity if they violate your constitutional rights. Just about every one of my constitutional rights from the First Amendment through the Tenth. <laughs> oh, man. You are incredibly stupid, dude, considering you just mentioned the Tenth Amendment, that the, they violated your Tenth Amendment rights. Dude, the Tenth Amendment grants the states the right to create laws that are not covered in the Constitution, you freaking dumbass. Man, oh man, oh man, I know you're going to go pro se in this case, and... You're going up against a very experienced prosecutor in this case. So, well, that prosecutor is going to have an easy time chewing you up and spitting you out. And it will be a very humorous sight to behold if it is ever put on the internet. Minus the second and maybe the third, but the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth have all been violated by this court and by the prosecutor. Let me ask you a question. So how, 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 I was looking into... Yeah, please stop just for a moment. How, how, we're just, at this point, yeah. we're talking competency to proceed to adjudication. Okay. You heard some of my comments about the fall you had in, uh, either off the ladder or roof in 2019, the injuries in 2011. The court wants to make sure that whatever happened to you there is not going to affect you in such a way that you won't understand what you're doing and uh, with a rational degree of understanding. Appreciate the court process, even if you disagree with it. File motions, make arguments like this. Can you explain to us at all um, if, whether that's something that has, uh, is, a, is a challenge to you, has, has harmed you, uh, or I, you think you're good? I don't know where the court discovered this information, but I have not consented to any of my private confidential health care information, HIPAA, that's Health Insurance Portability and Privacy Act. It's been violated by NAFCARE. Multiple, uh, uh, multiple evaluators have violated my HIPAA rights. Those are federal rights that I have to my confidentiality, confidentiality of my health care records. Well, is your response, Judge? I'm not going to answer that because I don't think you have the right to ask me. I object to the evaluations 
because Dr. Loring filed a false report. We did not meet for 15 minutes. She discovered information that I had specifically requested the Washington County Detention Facility and their subcontractor, NAFCARE, not to release any of my confidential private health care information. I was told by the, the NAFCARE nurse that um, took me in an intake that everything that I told her would be kept confidential. Well, for and the purposes I, of a competency hearing, the court needs to make an informed decision and the evaluators need to make an informed decision. And they look at your, your, your physical health, they look at your mental health. You understand that, don't you? No, the reason for the competency evaluation is I challenged your jurisdiction to cover yourself for the jurisdictional challenges. You didn't like what I was saying about challenging your jurisdiction. You decided that I was incompetent. So you issued... I never, to, I never decided you were incompetent. I, think I said the court had concerns about your competency to proceed to adjudication. I responded to those... I responded to that order on February 9th. And I explained that I did not consent to meet with Dr. <clears throat> Deborah Fletcher, I believe her name is, or Debbie Fletcher, or Amy Patterson. And I also responded on June 30th and August 11th with what's called a writ of quorum notus, and it's recognized in the Dallas Supreme Court as a writ of error. And I filed that you still have not responded to those writs, those three writs of error, challenging your jurisdiction and explaining to you my status and standing. I stand on the Constitution. I stand on the Declaration of Independence. I stand on the Articles of Confederation. I stand on the, um, the Bible. Okay, dude, you say you stand on the Articles of Confederation. Uh, dude, uh, you do know that the U.S. Constitution uh, made the Articles of Confederation obsolete, right? I mean, that document is was used for uh, the Continental Congress before the uh, current Constitution was written, right? You do realize that, right? Now, while the uh, Articles of Confederation were a foundational document for the Continental Congress, yeah, like, like I said, they're irrelevant now. And always have been relevant since the ratification of the Constitution. And on that note, I am going to continue this later on. I, uh, I'll have more of this particular video out tomorrow because there's just so much that I want to say about this guy, but it would take hours for me just to put it together. And, uh, well, this is a Friday afternoon, and I just don't have a lot of time for this. I got other videos i got to make, but Friday, I'm mean, sorry, Saturday and Sunday, oh, yeah, I'll have time for that. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed this portion of the video, and I will see you on the next one.